video is about bathing. Hazy wanted to help me out in introducing this video. She will not be the star of it. Hazy! Oh, she decided to jump out of the tub. Uh, she likes the bathtub. She thinks it's pretty cool and that's my point. And this video is to train your dog to like a bath. It's not stressful. It's fun. Use the right equipment. Uh, I bathe my dogs every four to six weeks. You'll find some people who bathe them, you know, every couple months. Uh, it's up to you. It's up to your preference. For me, I bathe them about every month to get that dead hair out, to keep them clean, to see what the skin's doing. Um, it helps to get when they're sh shedding to get that dead coat out. Uh, so enjoy the video and uh, feel free to ask questions uh, about where I got my equipment. I try and address that in the video as well as making grooming dogs fun because I love it. It's a great time I spend with the dogs uh, and they enjoy the time with me. So enjoy the video. For the shampoo I use to clean my dogs, I buy uh, a gallon of this number one systems excuse me, number one, all systems, super cleaning and conditioning shampoo. Uh, I find it's the best. I've used it for 20 years. I dilute it uh, with water and uh, it's a pretty great shampoo that uh, has worked for most all my dogs. I use White on White. It's Chris Christensen's White on White for the chest and the feet and the face for Blaze. And uh, that helps me get the dogs uh, bright white. What I do is I take, oh, I eyeball it, to be honest, but probably a quarter of this type of bottle. And it's I, probably a 16, 18 ounce bottle, I'd have to look, um, that I had left over and I put probably, oh, see, I, I eyeball it, guys, sorry. Um, probably a quarter. I don't know, maybe a little less than a quarter of that with shampoo and I warm with warm water, fill the rest with warm water and shake it and I have my shampoo. So uh, I buy this at 3Cs. They have a website, 3Cs Dog Supply, Dog Show Supply and uh, you can purchase it well as well. I'll show you my hot water heater setup. You'll excuse this. This is an outdoor uh, water heater so it's some friendly spiders in there. I have a setup that a very kind friend uh, made for me. So this is my hose attached to a nozzle that goes into my cold water and my hot water. And I just turn these levers to allow the different level of cold and warm, or yeah, cold and hot water. And I turn this on and water is now flowing through my hose. So I'm very fortunate to have this setup. Um, I wish I could tell you how to make it, but I will zoom in so you can maybe get your plumber friends. So if they put in an attachment onto the, um, each of the water funnels and uh, he was able to make that work for me. So this is attached to my hose, which will follow my hose, get you guys all drunk. Uh, and my hose goes to my booster bath. I have, I believe it's an XL size booster bath. Um, I'll have to look and see where you can find them online. I did buy this from Costco, uh, but this is awesome. It's my lifesaver. I've had it for 13 years. Bathed, I'm sure, hundreds of dogs in it. Um, it drains out onto my gravel right there. I have my shampoo right here. I tie in a dog there on a slip, they're on slip knots. So if they do end up, sadly, sometimes it does happen jumping over the side, I can undo the, the lead real quick. And I use this type of nozzle on my hose. Important, I can control this with my thumb. So when I'm washing a dog, I can turn this on and off and I'm not squeezing a nozzle. That is really important because I wanna be able to take my hand off of it and use it without having to squeeze it. My hand would get tired. So that's what I use in my bathtub setup and now we'll go get the dog. All right, so we have our bath victim here. This is Willow. She is a very hairy yak right now. So she's been here before. I'm hoping she'll jump right in, which she will. Um, this was trained with food. I always, always have food with me when I bathe dogs. I give her a piece, tell her that we're doing a good job. I have a lead here that I can get wet. I showed you the little knobs that I can tie a slip knot. So I always tie a dog in so they can stay and I can grab the leash, but it's on a slip knot. So if a new young dog does decide to uh, jump out, I'm right here, I have a leash. I can pull it out of the slip knot and we try it again. All right, so treats, dog, lead, we're good. So first thing I do 
is I hold willow, I'm always holding them. I start the water and I start it up in the head. So I always keep the ears down and if I'm gonna go underneath the ears, I grab the ears so I don't get water in the ears. And I don't have it on full force on the head. So I'm very kind with the head. Keeping the ears down, getting the whole head wet, the ears, everything. See, I can turn that with my just my thumb, it's super easy. So I showed you my white shampoo. The whitening shampoo is actually purple. So I kind of go up the stop, make a little bit of a cross to do the muzzle. And I roll up the muzzle. I don't try not to go on the nose. Making sure that white is white. Then I grab my regular shampoo, the number one all systems. I do the head, cheeks, the ears, underneath the ears, because that can get stinky. Rest of the head. I take a lot of time on the head because I want it to be clean, but they have a lot of ears, eyes, and nose that I'm trying to avoid. Then I start wetting the neck down to the shoulders. So the way I wash a dog is the section. So I've got kind of a, a panel. I like to say four panels, but I think there's much more panels. And I use my shampoo, I get her sudsy. And this is what, the reason I do this this way is so I have water in the coat. When you wash a dog and you just wet the whole dog down and then go back and shampoo, you don't have enough water in the coat for the shampoo. So then I come in back up front and I get the white, the white all wet down to her skin and I use my white on white. And if she starts shaking, I put my hand on her quickly so she knows to not shake. And I get in there in the chest with purple shampoo to get that white really white and pretty. People ask me how I keep my dogs so white. I wash them a lot and they don't actually have mud. I don't have mud in my yard, so that's a big part of it. So, got the chest done. Go down the foot and the leg. Get the feathers, make sure I'm getting water underneath all the way to the skin. And I'm getting in there with my fingers. My fingers are like giving her skin a bit of a massage. Get the black in her side of her chest, shampoo up and down the leg, the feathers. Get in, my fingers are kind of going into the hair on the front of the leg. Then I go to the paw and She's not like hazy, she has white paws. So I put purple on the white paw. And actually at this time I do the second paw because we've got enough water. So I get the other white paw purple. And then I keep moving around. The way I wash a dog is I do this whole side of the dog. I do it in panels and sections. Because Willow has such a thick coat, I'm gonna do from here to here. so the water stays in the coat enough and I can get a good suds when I'm washing her. She's awesome, good girl Willow. You're doing a good job. So I just keep moving around and then I rinse the dog all at the end because the white on white needs to take some time and it's supposed to leave it on the coat for a few minutes. So I do that kind of first. Do the balm. Get in the pants, make sure you get on the inside of the back leg. It takes me 10, maybe 10, 15 minutes to wash a dog and then I dry them with my dryer. So I'm really getting in there because dog might have dead coat, they have a thick coat. You wanna get down to the skin with your hands. There are some like little rubber guys you can use. I use my fingers because I, I can find mats, I can find skin issues. This is when I really get to know what my dog's skin is doing. Wait. And get the hair behind the hawk. You can't see me doing that. But then I do the tail. I'm using warm water on the tail. If you use cold water, you can get uh, something called dead tail. 
is where it the cold water goes into the gland. Stand up, well, good girl. In the gland, there's a gland at the top of the tail. If you get cold water sitting on that, it can create a dead tail where it kind of paralyzes the tail for a week or so. It's painful. It's not too big of a deal. You do sometimes get pain painkillers from the vet from it because it is painful, but it goes away and the, and the tail comes back. So I'm just now I'm going on the other side of the dog and doing the other side. So I'll come back when I'm going to rinse her. Okay, so I'm like five minutes from where I left you last. I'm going to start rinsing Willow. So what I do is I start, I actually do the head last because I like the, the white on white to stay longer. So I do the neck. I get into the neck and when you rinse it's really important that you're down to the skin and you see no more soap coming out. Um, some people use conditioners, I don't. This is a shampoo and conditioner combined. Um, if you have a dog with a lot of dead coat, you can use a conditioner, uh, but you gotta make sure you get it all out and conditioners are hard to get out of coat. I, rarely, I think I've used conditioner once or twice on a dog who had a really thick coat with a lot of dead coat I needed to work on getting out. So again, I rinse by the same panels I washed in. Careful to make sure I get underneath all the dead coat, or the, excuse me, the long coat on the tummy. Okay, good girl, well, good girl. Good girl. She's being a super good dog. She's done this many times, so she knows her job. When I'm doing a young puppy, I might have somebody... Of course I get wet, but that's bad. Bathing a dog. I might have somebody holding her and giving treats to a young dog. Um, a young dog, when I'm bathing them, is a lot harder. I'm holding the leash, and the dog, when I'm doing it, or having someone help me, because I don't want a dog going out of the tub. That's the goal, is to never let them jump out of the tub. So bathing the puppies is a bit of an acrobatic trick, but it's doable. So I'm just really making sure I get all the soap out, down the tail, in the pants, making sure that the, the water runs dry, or runs clean, with no soap left. Do the thick top line a couple times, make sure it runs clean, no soap's coming out. My hands are in the coat, I'm feeling what we've got going. And when you bathe a dog, just plan on getting a little wet. This part of how it all works. So I'm gonna come up to the front, getting her back her leg, underneath her leg. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna lessen my force on my water, do it the ear. So I'm gonna grab the ear and wrap it so it's all in my hand so the ear is closed. So I can rinse underneath the ear and not get water in her ear. And because I'm right-handed. See, so I have a hand on the dog, it's kinda like a horse, I always have a hand on him. So I'm gonna come back. Come here, though. Good girl. So I come here, it's really light water, so she can close her eyes, very gentle around the face. Come on this side, very gentle. I'm on the top of the ear. Underneath the ear here, I don't get water in her ear. Up, up the spray, and I get the chest. And then some underneath the chin, making sure this is all running clean. All right, so we have a clean willow. Okay, this is what I do. I love to squeegee out the dogs for the excess water, so I grab the ears, come down on the neck, I'm just getting excess water out, go down the back, and she'll help me. I try and do it before they shake. I'm go, squeezing down the paw, I, I give the paw a little squeeze, get the water out of the paw, down each leg, down each leg, 
What a good girl. Then I let her shake. Good girl. So watch my slip knot. I just pull this up and we exit the tub how we get in. And she shakes. She is on the table now. She's wet from her bath. I'm going to dry her. I have a canine hot blower dryer. It has two motors. So I use that when I dry my dogs. It's very forceful. I have other videos on how to dry dogs, so please look those up. I'll show a quick shot when Willow's done, but I'm gonna sign off because this is gonna take me about an hour, maybe longer, to dry her completely to the skin. It's so important when you dry a dog, you don't wanna leave them wet at all or else you risk a hot spot. So uh, we will sign off for now. We'll show you the finished product. It is done. I spent a long time drying her. She had a lot of dead coat that I got out of her. Um, you can only get dead coat out when they're dry. So you dry them and then you work the dryer even more. I use a pin brush. It's full of hair. I use a pin brush. Um, I trimmed her ears. I trimmed her feet. I have videos on each of those things, so I'm not showing it here. Um, but Willow looks fantastic. I'll get her standing here so you can see. Her, on, her feathers are straight, they're all dry, she's dry to the skin so she won't get a hot spot, her tail, and uh, she looks amazing. Huh. Yeah. So this is what happens when you uh, wash and dry your dog fully and uh, you take your patience and have some fun with it and enjoy the time with your dog. You have lots of treats and uh, then she can go run. So she's used to this. It's something that she has done for a long time. She's a, a very uh, accomplished show dog. So it was something that she got very used to doing and loves because she gets all the loves and cookies, right, Will? Huh? Did you enjoy that? Or did you do? Can you give me five? Yeah. All right, thanks guys. Happy, happy grooming.